The number is A18273. I got it when I, the second time I went to Auschwitz. It's getting faded and I'm worried about it, that it will disappear. Although many people said, why don't you have it taken out? I said, why shall I take it out? It's a badge of honor. So, my name is Erika Jacobi. It was March 19th, and my brother was supposed to come home, and he didn't appear. Somebody told us that the Germans marched in. Now there was a ghetto, an area which was surrounded by soldiers. We were given some kind of a food, but it wasn't edible. My best friend, whose name was Judy, the girl that I competed with, I was always better than she in gymnastics, but she was better in singing. She said, I don't like it. And I said, but you have to eat it, otherwise you won't live. And this is the first time I heard her saying, I don't want to live. Because she lost her parents and she had four little siblings and she no longer had them around. Then they brought in my aunt with 20 little kids and we all occupied a barrack. Okay, and my grandfather, somehow they brought him in there and they put him down on the floor. And I never forget that picture. They caught him and they shaved his hair from his head and from his beard. And I never saw my grandfather without his white beard. My grandmother could not talk anymore. She just smiled. That was her defense. She could always smile. The people were taken out, put into a cattle car, and next to me was an old man who lived about two houses away from us and who used to call me always, you dirty Jew, get off my lawn. What was he doing in this cattle car? I found out that he was a Jew, that he probably converted and he thought that he could escape our fate, but he couldn't. We waved to people who were watching the train. Of course, they were not my friends. They were happy that the Jews were taken away. After three days, we arrived to a place which was called Auschwitz, and they were beating us to get out, and we had to line up in front of the German officer whose name was Dr. Mengele. He was in a beautiful uniform with black shining boots. He had a whip in his hand and my mother said, oh, I'm going to stay with, with the grandparents because they need help. Suddenly in about 15 minutes, I see her running in front of Dr. Mengele, who was the selecting doctor. She told him, I'm very strong and I can work and I want to go where the workers go. Mengele said, okay, go. She caught up with me and I said to her, why did you leave grandma? And she said, because grandma said, I have to take care of you because there are too many German officers around. So just like that, she just gained her life because if she was shown the other side, that led to the gas chamber. After Auschwitz, we were taken to a working camp. Uh, there was no time to rest. I found one Nazi who gave me an apple. I cut it into 25 pieces to give it to all the people in my little group. And then we were taken back to Auschwitz. My mother was very ill, couldn't walk. So two on each side, we carried her. She was able to be selected for work again. 
Um, eventually we ended up in a factory where we worked on airplane parts. And my mother sabotaged and she passed those that didn't fit and she was almost killed. She felt that she had to do something to make the Germans lose the war. My father remained very true to his religion. He would not eat the food that they gave him. And my brother, my brother was just unlucky that he got ill and he, he couldn't walk and they, shoot, they shot him. World War II ended and our camp was liberated by the Russians. We passed by a town which was all bombed. I see a couple, an old man and an old woman. And the old woman sitting next to the man and looking in his hair for lies. And to me that was the image of destruction that I can never get rid of from my mind. I went into a house which was a palace where some very important Germans lived and I pierced all the wonderful paintings on the wall. Everything I could do with my anger, but that was it. Then I, then I stopped and sat down and cried because something that is good in you, can, nobody can take away. See, I'm still an optimist. I still think that somebody can change. And because I am still hopeful, I think that helped me survive. It's I am not just by myself. If I'm only for myself, who am I? You are very important. You are the generation that will carry on this world. <laughs>